Ow. Ow. God damn it, so close. You know what's gonna happen. Yes! Yes, Artie! You my hero, Artie. We can win this. We can still win this. As long as that medium thing doesn't decap. We got this. No! No! No way! You gotta be kidding me. So close. Hello fellow tanker space bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks and today we are in a brand new Italian tank guys yes we are in the Ariete Progetto Mod 3546 I think that's what it's called so today we're gonna focus on this tank I bit the bullet I got this tank for myself just to start grinding my crews for the Italian line that's upcoming soon it wasn't an easy pill to swallow this tank currently in the store is at about 13,000 gold, the lower package and about 15,000 for the higher package. You're probably gonna have to wait a week or two in order for this price to go down. So if you're patient enough, not like myself, then I would suggest waiting a little bit longer. But if you really want to have this tank right away, then uh, unfortunately that's the amount of gold you're gonna have to pay for it. So today we're gonna do a quick overview of this tank. I'm gonna try to show you what this tank is good at and specifically we're gonna focus on this interclip reload that's new and has been introduced together with this line of Italian tanks. But we'll get to that a little bit later. My first impressions of this tank, honestly it plays a lot like a light tank because it has a very good speed, it roams around the field at about 50 to 55 kilometers an hour. It has no armor whatsoever, so we cannot count on armor. I mean, any tier can penetrate this tank because the armor is pretty much paper, even the turret is paper. So what this tank is good at is basically mobility and being this sneaky bastard that sits in the back and just kind of pokes you every once in a while. That's basically how you played this tank. But the gun is very punchy, it has very good penetration, we'll look at penetration values later, but standard shells are over 200 millimeters of penetration, which is very nice, especially for a premium tank. And the gun is very accurate, I mean it normally hits the spots, and even though my crew in this tank is not very good yet because I'm training it as of right now, it still performs pretty good. And look at this puppy, doesn't it look amazing? It's an absolutely fantastic looking tank, probably one of the best looking tanks in the game. Look at even the exhaust ports, they're so beautiful. So yeah, the detailing on this tank is fantastic. I think Wargaming has done a pretty nice job with this tank. One thing that I noticed is that you cannot really get camo for it. I'm not sure why, I thought you'd be able to because there is no camo on this tank as we look at it right now, but anyway. Well, I hope uh, Wargaming introduces camo for this tank because it would be nice to have camo on it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to slap our logo. Yes, guys, since we can't put a camo on, so at least let's find our logo. And there it is. So what I'm going to try to do here, guys, first, I'm going to show you consumables and how I'm running this tank currently. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the reload mechanism of this tank and how this tank performs clamping up hills. So maybe we can get into details a little bit on that. And I also have for you some short clips from different battles showing how this tank can climb. Actually, this tank is really good climber, believe it or not, because of the good power to weight ratio, it can get up the hills. Uh, we're also gonna look at another clip that shows that this tank can really survive fall damage. It happened to me a few times, so I'll show you guys because of the way the tracks are positioned or located on a tank, 
it doesn't take a lot of damage especially if you land with your front down so we're gonna look at that briefly but now let's take a look at the specs of this tank so the engine power is 652 horsepower it seems like not a lot but the tank is very light therefore the power to weight ratio is really good the penetration on standard shells is 212 millimeters standard shells are ap rounds the penetration on premium shells is 259 millimeters which is very very good and premium shells are APCR rounds. The third set of rounds is the HE at 45 millimeters of penetration. We're looking at 240 damage per shot, 320 with HE round. Aim time is fantastic, 2.1 seconds with accuracy of 0.33. Man, this gun is good guys, trust me, it is good. Turret armor, 80 millimeters in front, 60 in a side, 25 in the back which is absolutely nothing. Anybody can pen you, like I mentioned to you earlier. Traverse speed of 36 degrees per second. View range of 390 meters. It's very nice. Once I get the crew up to speed on this tank, it can be used as a scout in a bottom tier games. So that's what I plan to do is use it as a scout in the bottom tier games and play this annoying scout role. Signal range of 570 meters. Okay, let's take a look at the modules quickly now. So we're gonna scan through it fairly quickly. We already covered some of the specs. So here, just power to rate ratio is very good at 18.63 horsepower per ton, very nice. The gun specs we already touched on, but one thing to point out is max gun depression, which is nine degrees, not 10, but still very, very nice. Terrain resistance at 0.4, pretty good as well. View range we already touched upon 390 meters, rotation speed 36 degrees per second, radio range 570 meters, and ammunition we already touched on. And this is how the crew sits. We have three crew members, one driver, a commander, and a loader. And here is the armor profile, like I mentioned to you guys before, armor is pretty much non-existent on this tank. Between 70 and 90 lower plate, top plate 51 to 71 turret almost about the same and even manlet is not really strong so that's our progetto now let's talk about this reload mechanism that's been just reintroduced with the italian tanks so this tank consists of three shells but unlike all the other tanks that are currently auto loaders the shells on this tank do not reload at the same rate so the first shell you fire the reload is the fastest the second shell you fire the reload is slower and the third shell you fire the reload is the slowest so the optimal way to play this tank is try to use only one shell if you want to maximize rate of fire. Now when the two shells or three shells come in handy is when you want to finish somebody off. If they're low enough HP that you can take them down, then I would suggest use it then. However, doing that is not going to maximize your rate of fire because if you fire three shells, your reload will be close to 30 seconds, which is not optimal. If you fire only one shell, your reload will be at almost nine seconds. Two shells, your reload will be close to 22 seconds. So as you can see, it doesn't make sense to fire all three shells. And honestly, I find it very confusing. <laughs> this tank is confusing to me because you can't play it as an auto loader. You can't play it as a single shot. So sometimes you're like, what do I do? What do I do? Help me, please. Do I play it as one shot? Do I play it as an auto loader? I guess it's a matter of getting used to. So the way I found myself playing is if the targets are available and I see that they have no chance of hiding, really, I would fire as many shells as I can. But if I fire one shell and I see the target is hiding behind the hill or behind the cover, then I wouldn't fire my second shell, if that makes any sense. So here I'm going to show you how to manage your shells properly. As you can see, I'm gonna reload. I'm gonna wait until my last shell reloads before I can approach the guy. I know the guy around the corner is a two shot to me. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come out, one shell, two shells. He's out of the game. Now I'm not gonna fire my third shell. I see the guy that's in front of me there. I don't wanna fire my third shell because if I do, my reload is going to be awfully, awfully long. So what I'm doing is I'm hiding behind the wreck. I'm actually waiting for the third shell to reload. And I know I have support behind myself. In the meantime, I'm waiting for my support to actually bring this guy down in number. And once they do bring him down in health, I will try to clip him out. Here we go. I'm going to go after him now. One, two, three. And my friendly takes him out. Now, the only reason I went early because I knew he was going to come after me. So I had to go 
and try to take him out of the game and I knew that I had support from friendlies even though I knew I couldn't clip him out I still went for it because that was the play to make so yeah that's the way you guys should approach it if you play this tank if you can clip somebody out then you clip somebody out if you can't then play it to its advantage fire one shell and maintain your rate of fire so now that I've confused you enough, let's take a look at how fast this tank can go. So what we're going to do is a quick test here. We're going to climb up on Himmelsdorf and you guys are going to see the speed of this tank is absolutely phenomenal. As you can see, it's going at about 54 kilometers an hour now. Very fast. Downhill, you can fly even quicker. So yeah, we're going to turn here and we're going to make our way up the hill. Thanks, buddy. Let me through. I'm faster than you. So let's take a look at here. This is uphill, upslope here. We're going at what 30 kilometers an hour. So it slows down. 27, 26 now, 25. So yeah, it slows down, but it's still very, very fast. I mean, this tank can move. I mean you can play it as a light tank totally. So I would see guys that are very good in light tanks, like someone like Turkey Tank. Yeah, they're gonna love this tank. Absolutely. They will adore it. So let's see how fast uh, we're actually going to get to the hill in Himmelsdorf. So we're a little bit, just a little bit over one minute. That's pretty darn fast, guys. Pretty darn fast. If you want to take a quick position on the hill, then uh, this is the tank for you. And now we're going to look at a few clips that show climbability of this tank. So we are on map. Baja or Baja, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And this location is quite prominent for people sitting on top, especially people that can get up. As you can see with no speed here, I have to wiggle a little bit to get up on top of that hill here at C5, but uh, no problem, we managed to get up there. So now we're gonna show you the climb from the other side. And this is location K8. Again, this location is quite prominent. People get up here all the time. So let's see if we can get up here. That shouldn't be a problem. Fairly easy. We can get up into this position here as well. So now we're going to get into a different position, a little bit closer. Also on the same map, on the same side. Location J8. And yeah, look at that. We're getting up the hill pretty quickly. 10 kilometers per hour. Very nice. So yeah, play around with climbability. This tank can climb, guys. And another thing at the end here, I'm going to show you when you drop off the hill and you do this, <laughs> it like space, you don't pay attention, you don't die. So this tank is really good at that because it's so light that, uh, yeah, it doesn't get damaged so easily, especially if you land on your front tracks like this. Okay, that's it for the review, guys. I hope that's enough to get you guys going and get an understanding of what this tank is like. Now to further explore how this tank is like, we're gonna jump into a couple of replays. Both of the replays will be at top tier because that's when this tank performs the best. Unfortunately, when this tank is a bottom tier, it is a um, shell magnet. Basically everything goes in. So. Yeah, you have to be really careful when you play it at bottom tier. Again, you gotta play it as light tank. When you play it at top tier, actually it's very similar. You're gonna have to be very careful. Although you can do a lot more because you have uh, 1400 hit points, right? So I did show you a clip at the beginning that was from tier 10 game. And I mostly did spotting in that game. So basically that's the only thing you'll be able to do and then pick your spots here and there to get some damage unless you turkey tank then you go for damage <laughs> um, so anyway we are on map pacific coast there are three well two artilleries on the enemy side we have three artilleries and initially i was gonna go to the beach because th that's where i like playing my medium tanks i'm not really a light tank player per se but uh, that's the area that i'm really most successful in but then i realized that there is no one covering this side of the map so i decided to stick around here so here, as you can see, I see this medium tank and I'm trying to take as many shots as I can before he hides. And that's what I started doing most of the time. 
Although this was probably one of the first games that I played, or one of the first 10 games that I played, and I still was screwy a little bit with the reload, so you'll see at the end of the game what happened there. So the first replay here will be actually an ace tanker. It's a nice damage number that I have accumulated, and I was really impressed by this. So here this light tank is scooting through, and I couldn't hit him. So now this is where this tank is great. You can actually chase light tanks down and take them out of the game because it's so fast. You can actually keep up, right? So I'm trying to get after this light tank. I put one shell into him. I'm gonna try to put the second one in, but then he runs off and I don't want to overexpose myself going any further. So I'm gonna try to reload here and get back. And also if I fired my third shell over here, then my reload would have been awfully long. So. With two shells, it's livable, three shells, not so much. I noticed that it's better just to fire two shells sometimes and use the third one only if you really need it. Especially if you're like in 1v1 situation or you can get crowded. You really cannot afford to unload all the three shells and go on a 30 second reload. Because remember, you only can do what, 220, 230 damage. I noticed sometimes this tank rolls low. So usually if I want to clip somebody out, I'm basically looking at whether they're at 600. If they're at 600, then I can go for it. If they're over, it's going to be close. Because if you low roll, good luck with that. So anyway, we're going to work this position as much as we can. And all these guys are going to keep coming. Keep coming. So we're going to be basically uh, juicing them as much as we can. So this guy is here, here isolated. So we're going to go around him. And we're actually going to clip him out. Because there's no one else with him in this position. So now we're going to drop behind the hill again into our safety unfortunately our absolution gets hit hard by the arty and uh, you know we're gonna need them later in the game because as you can see everybody's falling on this side very fast and that's the way these games are lately in world of tanks everything dies in seconds unfortunately people don't use strategy at all to play the game so again we're reloaded now we're good to go we're gonna see what's coming up here now. Unfortunately, what's coming in is uh, another Progetto. So what we're gonna do is just put one shell into him. We're gonna hide. That way we can maximize our rate of fire. And I was hoping that our medium tank or heavy tank is gonna show up here, but he doesn't. And here I slipped off accidentally. I wasn't gonna do that. But now since I did, I may as well unload the full clip into him and hide. And that's basically what happened there. The idea was to poke over and hit him once and then hide. But yeah, that didn't work out. So all of a sudden I noticed that everybody is down on this side. So I'm like, okay, I can't stick around here no more. If I stick around, I'm going to die. I'm on a long reload right now. So I decided to go and help our tank destroyer. And this is where I'm going to screw up really bad. Because I underestimated the reload. That was the only reason. So the idea here was that I'm going to hit that T20 once. Because I can't clip any of these two tanks in one clip there's no way so the idea here is i want to engage t20 because he is killing our tank destroyer so i wanted to hit him only once and wait for the reload but here yeah i decided not to I, it was impatience it wasn't underestimation really it was impatience that's all it was here and here is going to be the same thing impatience i only loaded two shells instead of three i should have loaded the third shell maximize my rate of fire here I would have been able to save my tank destroyer here if I did that. But I, I think at the end of the day, I, I don't think it would have won us a game anyway. Because these guys right now are capping. And there is no way I can make it back in time. So even if I killed those two guys, I still had to go on a reload anyway to kill the second guy. So it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't make any difference. But... Here I'm going to scoot over behind this uh, medium tank. We're going to try to kill him. Well, this guy, the T20, puts a shell into us once we are passing by. But the game is almost over. So we basically put our last shell in and we try to run off. But it's a defeat, unfortunately. But from damage perspective, we had a very nice game. And one thing I noticed, guys, I tend to auto lock a lot with this tank. Especially at top tier because you know you can pan especially with over 200 millimeters of penetration So that's the reason you saw a lot of auto locking here 
for new players it's probably not a good thing because you want to be able to aim your shots instead of just auto locking so i wouldn't recommend that but yeah we got an ace tanker 4.9k damage 153,000 credits really nice credits in this game we finished on top of the team so yeah it was a good game we fired 22 shots we had 21 direct hits very relatively good game okay so let's jump into the last game of the evening and as i mentioned to you guys before this is a top tier game again we are on map fjords there is no artillery in play which is absolutely spectacular because you know how i feel about arty um anyway so on this map, I'm actually going to show you a very nice location, but it only works early in the game in a very fast tank. So the location is in C8. And once you get there, you can actually poke over the ridge and you can have shots across to people that are in E7 or E6 area, somewhere over there. Now this location works fantastic if most of our tanks are pushing up the A line because then you have cover from behind but once you don't have cover here then you have to run so I see this light thing on my left side and I'm watching him to see if he spots anything in the meantime my idea was to climb up here and unload my clip once I unload my clip and the light tank spots people there I'm out of here and that's exactly the thinking here so I managed to put two shells into this guy Unfortunately, I'm not able to put the third one. So at this point in time, I see that our light tank got killed. So I'm out of here. Absolutely out of here. Quickly, wiggling and out of there. So as you can see, I got my early damage very fast. And that's the way to do it sometimes. If you guys know the map, you know the positions, you can get early damage and late damage. That's how you get your damage numbers up, like I told you before. So I think I played this game actually... I played this game almost perfectly. This is fantastic game to show at the end. Even though it's not an ace tanker, it's mastery class one. But I thought this game was played perfectly. As you can see here, I put only one shell into this guy because I see he's hiding. And that's the way to play this tank. Again here, one shell, the guy's hiding. So no more shells. I'm not firing like crazy idiot, right? See this T29? I don't have a shot at him. Am I gonna try one? No. It doesn't make any sense so we're gonna hang on in this position here because we're unspotted but now what we're gonna do is well first of all we spotted because this light tank the scout is coming in closer so what did I tell you about this tank this tank is a scout killer that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go after this scout he cannot be roaming around the back lines here we're gonna take him out of the game we ram him we put two shells into him unfortunately we got a big hit someone puts big hit into us and we get amorak at the same time but it was worth it guys it was worth it because if you let the light tank roam around you behind basically he's gonna be a little pest he's gonna keep on shooting at you from behind so here i'm looking at shots at this t29 i fired one shell in and at this point i was like i eh, may as well empty the clip it doesn't matter but maybe it would penetrate but it didn't so now i'm uh, it actually works because i'm gonna give myself a break i'm gonna get these guys to forget about me in the meantime i don't think i have any shots anyway so it worked out really good in reality i didn't have to fire the three shells probably firing one shell would be enough and try to relocate look for different shots so here uh t29 backs in so Again, I have no shots at him. I cannot penetrate his turret. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to change position and see if we have shots at these other guys that are in there. They can't spot me from there. So I'm looking for a shot here at the Progetto. And one misses. Second hits. And then he hides. So I'm not firing my third one. Which was the right decision. T29 shows himself. So basically I thought I could kill him here. Basically I thought I could kill him. Doesn't matter if one shell would miss. Then I could kill him with a second shell. Unfortunately. They both go astray. I 
couldn't hit him. With this gun accuracy, I should have been able to hit one of them at least. So here I'm gonna relocate again, look for different shots. And here I have shots at this guy. But he disappears. So I have a shot at this Indian Panzer. And if I do have a shot, I think I'm gonna take it here. Yeah, I should have probably waited. But he disappears right away, so he would have disappeared regardless whether I had third shell loaded or not. So at least I put one shell into him. So we're gonna look at the shots at this Progetto again. His turret is slightly visible. Yes, we take him out of the game. So we're gonna reload our last shell. And at this point I thought to myself, you know what, these guys are not moving here. I don't know why we have like five tanks in one spot. They're afraid to push two guys that are on the hill. So I decided to scoot around, clean up, clean up the backside. And once we clean up the backside, then we should be able to scoot up and kill those other two guys. And see how fast this thing is. It just zooms around the field. Absolutely zooms around the field. So I was going to go after this heavy tank, but all of a sudden I spotted the tank destroyer. So we're going to get back here. We're going to... We ammo racked him. I just realized that. I didn't know that. I didn't see that during the game. We actually ammo racked him. So we're going to wait for the third shell here. But we didn't have to. We could have probably rushed this heavy tank. We take him out of the game. That was a crazy ammo rack. <laughs> so we're going to scoot up the, uh, the hill. Up here to take out the last two guys. In the meantime, I have to be careful. I, I'm kind of you know, less than half health. And the Progetto is not spotted. I'm hoping he's not heading that way. Because the last thing I want is to engage in a fight with him and possibly die. I want to kind of maximize my damage numbers here. But then I notice that he's spotted, so he hasn't uh, backed down. He's still up there. So in that case, these two guys are probably won't be expecting me at all. So all I'm going to have to do is probably take out the T-29 first. Because he's not spotted, so I'm assuming he's just sitting somewhere around the hill. Somewhere over here. So yeah, I'm going to creep up slowly here. Yeah, I see the T-29. We're going to auto aim. Take him out of his misery. And then we're going to scoot after this Progetto. And we'll take him out of the game. Can we? Yes! And we get our Top Gun medal at the same time. Quick game, guys. But I thought it was very well played. And almost to the book. Although I still have to work on a little bit on the reload thing with this Progetto. Being too anxious, firing too many shells. Anyway, we managed to make 99,000 credits, almost 100,000 credits, with 3.2k damage, 6 tanks destroyed, Mastery Class 1 badge, Top Gun badge, 16 penetrating hits. Really, really nice game. Even though not a nice tanker, I thought it was nice. We finish on top of the team. Only 1339 base XP, not high base XP number. We fired 18 shots, we had 16 direct hits and 14 penetrations. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this review and the videos that I've provided for you. I hope you have a good understanding of this tank and what you can do with it. I hope it will serve you well going forward in your tanking adventures. That's it for today. Until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit. Check it out.